How's it going, everybody? I want to show you guys a really awesome application today called Wrap 3D. Now, Wrap 3D is something I use at work. It's something I use at home. It's a phenomenal uh, piece of software written by some crazy fucking Russian dudes who figured out a way to literally wrap like one head onto another head and line everything up. So the eyes go to where the eyes are, the nose, the nose, the lips, the lips, pretty damn fucking perfectly to the point where my workflow now is, you know, I have heads like this that I've made um, and then I don't ever make a head again for the rest of my life. I don't even retopo heads. I just take this and wrap it onto either a sculpt or a scan data or um, in this case, we're gonna wrap it onto this, which is just another mesh that's not a sculpt and it's not scan data. Um, and the reason why I would want to do that is because this has edge flow that I created that I think is for the most part just about perfect for um, animation and stuff. Um, I'm actually noticing I accidentally shifted this a bit. So ignore this one <laughs> slightly off uh, quad. Um, now at a quick glance, well, let me just first say, I didn't make the original head for either of these. So these two are the same. This one, I'm just highlighting the edge flow on the left here. Um, I didn't make the volume for either of these. So I downloaded both of these by the same artist. I, if I can find out who that was, I've had these for a little while. Uh, I'll see if I can give them credit. Um, but I didn't create the original volume for these. Um, in fact, the original volume for this had very similar geometry to this. It was sort of like this, where it was optimized on the side and had some edge flow that I didn't like. So I redid the whole head in uh, 3D coat. And that's the head I use for everything. So now that I have this, I can wrap this around ogres or people, or as long as it's basically anatomically human, I can wrap it um, and then I'm good. Um, and the reason, you know, at quick glance, I'll just show you like why <sighs> this looks great at quick glance. You know, it's like, oh, the volume's really nice. The form is really good. It looks like a really nice head. Um, but then when you really start testing out some of the loops, you start getting crazy shit like this, like where he's wearing specs. <laughs> and this loop goes all the way around in weird ways. Some of them are nice. Some of them are like this. It's not until you get really close to the eye, you start getting... Um, correct loops like this okay so for me like at, at film quality this is sort of unex well not sort of this is definitely unacceptable this is not something we can do we don't want to use this for blend shapes or facial animation so we want something that has really really nice well laid out loops that we know will deform correctly and also sculpt uh, if you want to sculpt on this correctly later you can do that as well so let me hide our little clown chick here. Now I wouldn't, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna apply a smooth to it just so it's nice and dense. And again, you would use this software that we're, I'm gonna show you in a second with scan data. If you sculpt something in Mudbox or ZBrush and you wanna decimate it and bring it in and you wanna wrap this head or whatever head onto your sculpt, you can do that. Um, for the most part though, like I haven't modeled a head since like 1998. It's just not something I'm ever gonna spend time doing. Retapo, maybe from time to time, but for the most part, once I'm in a studio and I've created sort of a library or I've got a head or two that I know work for different scenarios, I'm not gonna make any more heads after that. Um, so let's do a couple things. Okay, so we're gonna call this guy Scan. We're gonna call this chick Perfect Loops. So that's fine. Um, it's probably worthwhile to sort of line them up as best you can. You don't have to do this, but lining them up within you know the realm of possibility or scaling them appropriately is not a bad idea. Um, any help you give the wrap software, the better. So this is our scan dude. So we're gonna export selection and we're gonna call this guy Scan dude OBJ. And now we're going to export the girl and we're going to call her Perfect Loops. Cool. So now we're done with our Maya, right? Now we want to launch Wrap 3D. Wrap 3D has an awesome, very simple user interface. 
The navigation is the exact same as Maya, which is super great. Hey, ZBrush, might want to fucking think about that. Um, it's a node-based application. I wouldn't say I've mastered it by any stretch, but I use it for what I use it for, and it works actually incredibly well, uh, surprisingly well. The first time I saw this in demos, I was kind of like, mm, it's kind of a, it's just a demo. I seriously doubt it works that well. It definitely works pretty fucking well. <laughs> um, so your node editor is up here on the right and it works pretty simply. We're going to press tab and then we get a few options for the type of nodes we can add. So I want to load geometry. So I go to load geometry and let me right click on this and we'll call this um, scan. And to put in this node, the scan data, I have my options here. So anytime you have a node here in this node space, the options for that node will be down here. It's very straightforward. So I'm going to select my scan and I'm going to go find my scan. So the scan is scan dude. Booyah. So now this is scan dude. Now he's in the application. You might be like, well, where the fuck is he? He's way up there because we actually have his head in correct height 3D space. So I press F that will bring him up to the center of my viewport. Looks great. Now I also want to bring in, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna press tab again. And I want to load another piece of geometry. This one I want to rename. We'll call this uh, perfect loops. Booyah. Let's go get our perfect loops and we'll call this perfect loops. Boom. Now we have both, okay? Okay, so next thing we want to do is um, we need to align these. So we want to go under, we have a couple options here. So your first thought might be to go, we want to go under alignment. We will in a moment, but first we need to select points to align to. So I want to go under selection because I want to select points. So I want to select point pairs. Um, the other thing which is a nice sort of tip is you'll notice the colors sort of match. So this is the same color as this. This is the same color as this. So you can sort of use that as a cheat sheet as well. So I want to take, I always do it the same. I do left to right. I do the perfect loops on the left and I do the scan on the right. Don't do it the other way. Okay. So I want to go take in my nice loops, put it here and my scan and put it here. Now you might think nothing's happened. Nothing has really happened. But until when I select, select point pairs. Now I go over here to my visual editor. Um, in the application, I have a few different types of viewports. I have viewport 3D, 2D, and visual editor. Now visual editor, before I rotate around or anything, what I want to do is go down and say sync views. Now when I sync views, it's going to line everything up. So that's going to make my point selection process very st straightforward and very easy to do. This is also another reason why it's nice to sort of line these up and scale them so they're in the same realm of scale. You don't want to have one head the size of a baseball and another the size of a mountain, right? So um, all we want to do, and I'll probably speed this part up just a little bit, but I will talk uh, briefly about this, is you can go left to right or right to left. The most important thing is, is you want points to match. So I'm going to select one and one. Well, or I guess in this case, zero and zero. <laughs> um, the point is I need these to be in about the same area. And if I select over here and I don't like where it is, I can select on it again and move it anywhere else I want. But you always want to make sure when you're selecting, you don't lose track. Don't, don't make like 10 points over here and then try and do those same points on their side. I kind of will do one or two on one side and then go back and do the, the, the matching on the other side. So just don't get too lost when you do that. So this little eye detail here, I also want. Don't get too crazy. It, it can almost be counterintuitive to put too many points. So we're going to go three. And because the numbers are appearing here for you, that's a good... That's a good tell for you. Like, am I, uh, I've gotten it before where I've had like 60 points and then all of a sudden, 
I'll select one on the left, it'll say 60, and the one on the right will say 59. I'll be like, fuck, I, I got off one <laughs> at some point. And that ruins your day, and then you kill yourself. Um, I'm going to stick with this for now and then move on. We can always add a few points later. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And we'll do top of the eyelid, bottom of the eyelid. Let's do the eye corners. Um, okay. For me, it's all about hitting crucial areas. So I want like the side of the nose here to match the side of the nose here. I want this corner to match where this corner goes. Know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Let's go 12, 12. Another pro tip, I always try to do the inside of the nose. If you don't do the inside of the nose, you might get some weird results. It's pretty awesome at just deciding what it should do correctly. I actually don't have any idea how they fucking do this. It's kind of remarkable, actually. Um, now, I know I want to find, like, the tip of this nose, and I want it to go, say, to the tip of this nose. You can get a little crazy if you want. If you want to line up, um, let's leave the nose for now. Let's not get too crazy on the nose. Mm. Okay, let's focus on the lips for a second before I dive in and get too deep on this stuff. Let's do the middle of the lip. We'll do the top here, the ridge. And we'll do this corner, do this corner, oops. Then we'll do the bottom. So uh, partially too, I sort of will like follow a loop with my eye and I'll say, okay, this loop, you know, like this is the bottom of the most bottom portion of the lip, which I want to go here. And then I'll follow this loop, so like this, to here. And I'll do the same thing here, so like this. The, I feel like eyes, lips, nose, those are sort of crucial. The eyes are the most challenging, um, but surprisingly, it seems to work out 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, Just so that the lips line up nice, let's go. Let's do one here, one here. And even though we are doing left and right, generally what I'll do is after I'm done, I'll bring the head after it's finished back into Maya. I'll delete one half and just flip it because it doesn't use, it might do it and I just don't know how to do it or I've never looked into it, but it doesn't use symmetry, which makes sense because most people probably use this with scan data and scan data isn't symmetrical because um, people aren't symmetrical. Let's go kadoosh and kadoosh. So I want the tip of his chin to be where the tip of her chin is. And don't get too caught up and noodle these too much. So the ears, I'll, I'll put quite a few points on the ears because I, I have decent ear geometry here and I don't want it to go all crazy and end up in the wrong places or not take advantage of the edge flow. So I want this corner to match this corner. I want this detail to line up to this detail. 
I have a nice loop here, and I want it to go to where this loop is. Let's go. Boom, 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 boom. Booyah. And then for the lobe, I'll maybe give it one more point for the lobe. I like identifying the jawline as well. So like this is his jaw and I want her jaw to go there. Let me get some coconut water really quick. Mm. Uh. Okay. Off we go. Uh, cease and dis desist. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. Kadoosh, kadoosh. Boop, 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 boop. All right. The other thing I'll do sometimes, because I've learned the hard way, is just to make sure like the back of the head doesn't somehow, somehow wrap to the ear, I'll sort of pin the head. And to do that, I'm just going to say I want, you know, I want to identify like the corner, back corner of the ear with a few points. And that'll just sort of pin everybody down so they don't get out of control. So I want kadoosh, 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 kadoosh. Ah, to the yeah. You know what's even cool? Like if she had more, so we're wrapping her to him. If she had more neck, all the way, like if the polygons went all the way down to the shoulders and it went past this guy, it still wouldn't break. It would average out the bottom of her. I guess in this case, it would average out the top of her shoulders to align with where these shoulders are. It's huff, 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 fucking crazy. Like if you tried to wrap this in ZBrush to a mesh that it didn't have enough geometry to wrap to, it would like explode into infinity or it would wrap to the edge um, in a horribly undesirable way. Um, so yeah, it does some pretty awesome stuff. Now, you can get crazy with the eyes and you can say, I want every little t -t 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 point. I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to give it a couple more points. Uh, I'm going to give it one above the brow and one for the corner. I'm going to do that on the right. Kadoosh, 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 kadoosh. Now the eyes are really important, so I'm going to put a couple more. I'm going to go kadoosh. Gadoosh, Gadoosh, and Gadoosh. Booyah. In your face, and Gadoosh. Okay? Kapow. Yes. And then we'll go here. Okay. <sighs> sexy. Now, I've never tried to do it without doing this. I'm going to put like another. I'm going to go here to here because nostrils are complicated and I want it to do it right the first time. In all the demos, there's not very many demos of this software, but in the few that I've seen by the vendor, they don't seem to do as many points as I do. So I might overkill with points. But anyway, we're at about 56 points. Is that right? Yeah, we're at about 56 points now. So now we're good. We're, we're basically done. This was five minutes of our lives. And for the most part, we're done. So we have loops, scan, and select point pairs. Now we want to wrap. So again, we're going to add a new node. Now don't freak out. If you deselect this point pair node, everything will disappear. Because what you select in here is what it will display. Whatever node you select is what it will display. So I'm going to select in here. I'm going to hit Tab. And now I want to align, and I want to do wrapping. Um, OK. Again, this is a nice time to use the colors. So I want to 
just like I went blue to blue, I'm going to go blue to blue. Okay. And so now what I'm basically saying is I want the perfect loops geometry in the first slot, the scan in the second slot for the wrapping. But now the wrapping needs to know, well, what the fuck? I need some points. So we go yellow to here. Booyah. Um, now it'll give you this little warning and the warning, all it's saying is press compute to compute the results. So this is everybody lined up. And when I want to see what it's going to do, I will press compute and then crazy Russian wizardry happens and we wait and we wait. This takes about, um, you can reduce the number of subdivisions. Uh, I keep it at default three. So right now it's wrapping to subdivision two of three. Um, I always leave it at three. I've never changed that number. If for some reason you're lazy and you think waiting 90 seconds is too long to finish ahead, <laughs> then uh, uh, by all means lower the number, but um, it's about 90 seconds, 60 seconds maybe, I'm not sure. But it's a good time for coconut water. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yes. Woo! Ah, uh, Corona. We are f -f fucking done. Okay, so we're done. The head is wrapped. So now what the program is essentially done is there's three meshes in here right now. Okay, there is this mesh, this mesh, and we just created a third mesh. So now if you want to see what's going on, we're going to go to our viewport 3D again where you can see all these meshes. We're gonna turn off perfect loops and off scan. This, holy shit, is our wrap. So now remember, this was what we started with. This was the chick we wanted to morph. So this is our scan. And now this is the chick head turned into the dude head. Now, there's a couple tweaks I want to make. Only a couple, like a little bit here and here. Don't worry. I mean, even the fucking ear comes out pretty damn good. Actually, totally good. <laughs> Every time I use this app, I'm like, how? Why? Why did this take so long to come out? And how much money do I have to give you to have this software? Sweet chocolate Jesus. Awesome. So there's a couple cleanup areas. You can see here and here. So let's do that. We can clean up within the software. So to do that, I want to create another node. I'm going to press tab. And then I want, uh, where is it? Where's brush? I'm looking for brush geometry. Brush. Okay. Now again, every time we make a new node, we need to plug in, we need to re-plug in our, some of our original data. So we have our wrap mesh. We don't want to plug in the original mesh because we've changed it. It went from this to this to this. Now we want the wrap to go here and we want the scan that we're trying to match to go here. Okay. So now if you select this brush node and you go to your visual editor, because the viewport is just a viewport. The visual editor is where we do any type of editing. So now because we have the brush node activated and it's selected, we get a nice little UI on the left, which looks like it's straight jacked from Mudbox <laughs> um, with a few basic tools. And these are basically just move and relax projection tools. Um, so. I basically never use move. If I'm going to move something, I use move project. If I want to adjust my brush size, I right click and I can scale up and down. If I want to adjust my intensity or anything over here, strength defaults to 25. We want to say five or whatever it is. So if, for example, I did want to move some of this around, I could start sliding like this. If I wanted to relax it, I would go to relax project. 
Because remember, move will just move. I don't want to really just move anything. I want it to move along the surface. Same thing with relax, project. So I can, my strength is only five, which is fine. Sometimes it's exactly what you want, sometimes not. So remember, now I'm smoothing this out, but it's still wrapped to the surface. And the only place I'll ever really spend any significant time, almost ever, is the eye. Is the eyes. It's plural. Why did you screw it up? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, this one's a little bit out of wonk. Partially, I don't give a shit because this one's a little better and I'm going to delete one side. Um, but I still can pretty much quickly fix both. So I'm going to sort of move this. And get it a bit closer to what I want. Na, 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 na. Let's go back to my move project. So for whatever reason, this one slid way up. So we're going to move this back down. Oops. Okay, let's do a little bit of relax. Cool. Now I'll show you one more trick and it's the clone brush. The clone brush is pretty cool. So let's say, so you can see that the program is sort of averaging right here a little bit. You can see that my mesh actually if I wanted to go move project, it would sort of update it a bit. There we go. My sensitivity is very low, so I don't like having the really high sensitivity. Okay. So let's say you have this, this look or this shape and you feel like it's too much. You want to go back to the original, the perfect loop version. So what I want to do is I want to go to my clone brush. If you want the clone brush to work, it just requires this additional one. So you want to go, because remember, just to break this down, we have the wrapped mesh going into the first slot and the scan going into the second slot. So when we're viewing this node, we're viewing the wrapped mesh and the scan. If I want to use the clone brush, which is an option, I need to take the original and put it in the last slot. Now what that allows me to do, which is kind of cool, is I can brush over this really nice. And basically what it's doing is it's it's, how do I explain it? <laughs> it's basically where I brush over, it's applying, it's making it like the original mesh itself, the perfect loops. So if a mesh gets really out of wonk, uh, then you can apply this clone brush. Let's do it over here, because this is a little bit jacked over here, right? And it's a nice cheat way of sort of blending from your original mesh to your final mesh. And that's pretty freaking done as far as I'm concerned. Is there anything else I need to fix? No. No. Maybe I'll move this. Actually, I'm going to just do a little bit of a relax project here. I think that's about it. 
We're done. We're fucking done. Holy shite. So, once you're ready and you want to save this out, we're going to say tab. We want to save now, so we want to save geometry. And we want to go from this one to this one. Okay? Oh, yeah. First things first. And I always forget. I'm really glad they always highlight this. So this is our finished mesh. We want to, it'll warn you. The changes made have not been applied yet, blah, blah, blah. So we want to select this brush node and say apply. Kadoosh! Now it's applied. Now if I want to save this geometry out, I select this node. And we'll call this... We'll call this fuck yeah dot obj. We'll save the normals so the normals are nice and smoothed. Um, it's going to say, well, where the heck do you want it? I want it here. Fuck yeah, obj. Accept. And compute. So again, while we have this selected, we're going to say compute current frame. Kadoosh. Now, if we go back to Maya, let's do a few things here. Okay. Import. Fuck yeah, OBJ. Check this out, bitches. Boom. Boom. So we started with her, we wanted it to look like him, and we ended up with him, except with her loops. Now we have sexy face loops. Hey-o! Boop, 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 bo